The impacts of rapid technological change are an ever-present aspect of modern life. We're told that artificial intelligence is transforming the way everything works, almost overnight. We're warned that social media is undermining democracy, polarizing society, and threatening the mental health of our youth. We face unprecedented ethical questions as a result. Looking at the degree of conflict, disconnection, um, the, the loss of any shared sense of truth or the real are really scary, profound problems. That's especially what exacerbates the sense of crisis for our young people. We've made it so easy for ideas to explode around the world rapidly. Misinformation, disinformation, to explode around the world, to take advantage of our own weaknesses, to change global thinking. The only way systems maintain themselves is if the information within them is consistent with their world. If inconsistencies, if disinformation spreads, systems fall apart. I often use uh, the term VUCA. The world is volatile. Everything changes ever more quickly, uncertain. We really can't predict what's going to happen. Complex, that means everything is connected to everything and ambiguous, yet we don't really know what all these things mean. Despite its disruptive effects, we nevertheless need new technologies to solve planetary challenges, such as climate change, energy supply, and environmental pollution. We need trusted technologies to communicate truth if we hope to avoid future pandemics and conflicts such as autonomous wars or nuclear holocaust. Technology is a tool, it's, a, it's an amazing tool, it helps us solve all kinds of problems, but the pace of technological change or technological advancement is vastly faster than the capacity of human institutions to keep up with that change. How can human institutions possibly keep up with the pace of modern change, such as the unpredictable and unintended effects of social media? If artificial intelligence is indeed transforming the way our world works, what role will human intelligence and human values play? Where will we find the ethical direction to guide humanity's future? These questions lead to what human energy calls a techno-social dilemma. Humans are at a loss and are largely shaping their lives around technology instead of technology actually helping to make our lives better. We're becoming radically changed by the communication media that we've unleashed that have huge unintended consequences. And they're ultimately based upon something that began with the beginning of our lineage. Our search for direction to humanity's future begins by looking at humanity's past when technology and society first began to co-evolve at the birth of the noosphere. As the term biosphere denotes the realm of living systems that encompass the Earth, the noosphere is the realm of thinking systems that connect around the planet today. But the noosphere has been evolving in scale and complexity for a very long time. So the noosphere to me really is something that began to develop with the first evolution of human symbolic communication. It's been developing, I think, for close to two million years. Human thought is by its very nature social, is by its very nature embedded in a noosphere, a larger human thought. The social nature of noospheric thought is expressed in human societies and the technologies they use to communicate. For most of the noosphere's history, societies and technologies evolved at much the same pace. The yellow line represents the rate of technological change over time, and red, the rate of social evolution. For hundreds of thousands of years, our ancestors used spoken language to coordinate their activities in small groups. 
Only 5,000 years ago, the invention of written language was the next technological leap, enabling the evolution of institutions in the first city-states. Only a few hundred years ago, the printing press made written language widely accessible, leading to democratic institutions in large nation-states. The telegraph, the first electronic communication technology, enabled the noosphere to expand to global scale. The rapid development of telephone, radio, and television increasingly challenged society's norms. But when smartphones and social media connected billions of people around the world, a dilemma emerged. The noospheric nature of human thought and human mental existence depends upon communication, is driven by communication. And now that we've amplified it so drastically in just the last few decades, it has radically accelerated both the speed of this process, um, but also uh, maybe the kinds of dynamics that are intrinsic to it. The dynamics intrinsic to the noosphere's acceleration too often take us in a negative direction today, such as conspiracy theories and disinformation campaigns. Might new dynamics give rise to positive values as well? We can gain insight by understanding the fundamental relationship between value and life. When we look at life, life itself, even the simplest life is normative. And by that I mean every simple living thing has values, even microorganisms. There are good environments and bad environments for them. There's not good environments and bad environments for chemistry, but there is for organisms. Value has been with life from the beginning. We have just amplified that and turned it into something much more complex. Our Paleolithic ancestors amplified the nature of values when the noosphere first began to form. When the complexity of technology and society increased with writing and printing, new values such as freedom and democracy first emerged. That brings us back to our dilemma and the transition to an electronically connected planetary noosphere today. Somehow, new kinds of properties can emerge in the world. And evolution has told us how that works. We're in the beginning of, and maybe in the middle of, a new kind of transition of this sort, on which new kinds of meaning and new kinds of value are emerging for the first time. As a result, it's unsettling, it's disturbing, but it is a process that I think is typical of the evolutionary process. There are major transitions in evolution, and I think we're going through one of them. And that always involves new kinds of value. Amid the chaos of our modern dilemma, how can we find new values that take us towards a unified noosphere that benefits humanity and the Earth? Finding new ways to cooperate at higher levels of complexity might hold the key. And indeed, if you look at what science tells us, we see that evolution has been producing ever more complex systems. And these systems were not only growing in complexity, they were growing in agency, autonomy, life, intelligence, consciousness. And the further evolution gets, the more conscious you might say it becomes of itself. One of the things that an evolutionary worldview makes clear is that how we act depends upon how we think. Our meaning systems, our symbolic systems, are truly the cultural equivalent of our genes. And so just as how we act depends on the genes that we have, how we act depends upon the thought and the symbols and how they're put together. Therefore, in order to create, action-wise, the noosphere, basically worldwide cooperation, we must be able to think in terms of this science-based worldview. So looking at the big picture, looking at the noosphere, looking at the idea of what you might call global intentionality. As we can develop better global intentionality in which we actually have good information about what we are actually doing and how it affects the Earth, um, we have a much better chance of at least recognizing and doing something about these problems. Um, so I think in the short term, the motivation of having a positive vision 
and recognizing all the ways that that positive vision can be undermined by what we're doing currently um, is an important first step. Human energy is helping humanity take that first step by performing and supporting research into the emergence of value and meaning in the noosphere today and sharing that knowledge by producing and disseminating a wide range of media. Massive dissemination is part of our goal, but we also want to um, shape uh, and, and um, determine to some degree the story that goes forward, right? Especially the deliberate engagement in sharing knowledge and access and information and tools and networks and transforming the way one does things in the process of doing that um, can be really inspiring. And I see that as the work of the Noosphere. What human energy offers that's rare and almost unique is a vision of a collective organism rising up. Things are not being addressed entirely from the point of view of an individual person or an individual nation state or an individual corporation. Rather, the, the, or the context is this, this emergence of something as new as the multicellular animals that first came forth. That, I think, is the unique contribution of human energy in addressing the challenges of our time.